Hey guys, are you new to Java? Are you in the process of learning Java? Or are you confused with the topics that you have to learn in Java to become an expertise? So then, this video is for you. This is a video series exclusively for freshers who are in the Java learning path. Let us see what are the topics that you have to learn in Java to become an expertise in Java. To start with, it is Java basics. What is Java? What are variables, the data types and operators? What are the control flow statements as in if else, switch case, loops, that is for loop, while, do while. If you are coming from any programming language construct, you might be knowing. There also it is the same structure. What is that particular programming language? Then what are the data types, control flow statements, operators? So till this, every programming language is similar. Here also it is the same scenario. Once you have done with control flow statements, you need to understand about what are arrays and what is a string. String is a class in Java. Now, once you have understood the basics of Java, it is mandatory that you have to do multiple hands-on practice in all the topics that you have learned till now. Say for example, you can do some basic programs like find the greater of three numbers, find the smallest of three numbers, find the perfect number in an array, find the smallest number in an array, find the greater number in an array, sum of all the numbers, average of all the numbers, find the Armstrong number, find the palindrome, find the repetitive characters in a string, find the vowels in a string. So you can do multiple hands-on practice with, these, with all these topics that you have learned till now. What is the advantage? There are three advantages. Your logical skills will improve. Because you are making your hands dirty in Java, you will get to understand the syntax of Java very properly. And together with that, you are preparing yourself for the interviews that you will be attending in Java. Let me show you a few questions. Find the even number, odd number, factorial, then Fibonacci series, prime number, creating a pattern. So these are few questions that you can do once you have learned the basics only. So for this, what is the ID that you can pick and choose? Usually there are three main IDEs which is used very much with Java. One is Notepad++, the other one is IntelliJ, the third one is Eclipse. Eclipse is my personal choice. So once you have chosen your IDE, you can start working with the topics of Java. Remember to do at least 50 to 60 programs in arrays and string only. 50 to 60 programs. Then move on to OOPS concepts. Under OOPS, we need to understand about what is an object, what is a class, what is a constructor, what is the use of parameterized constructor. Then move on to the OOPS concept. Under polymorphism, first start with overloading, method overloading, constructor overloading. Then move on to inheritance. After you have understood inheritance, learn about what is overriding, what is the purpose of overriding, what is the difference between overloading and overriding, then abstraction. When you are coming to abstraction, be very clear. You Even if you are learning the concepts, it is not enough. You have to do many hands-on programs in all these object-oriented concepts. Once you have learned abstraction, move on to encapsulation. People, when, we are, when I ask about encapsulation, they just give the definition. It is not enough. You should understand what is the real purpose of encapsulation and how encapsulation is achieved in Java. You should understand what is the Java mean, what are the access specifiers available in Java, what are the access specifiers allowed for a class, for method, for instance variable and also for local variable. So once you have learned these concepts with simple programs, remember to implement all these concepts using a simple application. Because there is abstraction, you can try to simulate using a simple ATM program wherein you can have the super class as account class, the subclass as savings and current. You can simulate it using an ATM, a proper ATM using switch case with like whether you want to do withdraw or deposit. If I click withdraw, whether you want to take it from savings account or current account. Like that you can implement all the concepts that you have learned till now. Remember, first is multiple hands-on practice. The next part is implementing the concept using a proper project. At least you should do two to three mini projects in case of OOPS concepts. Once you have done till that part, move on to static. In case of static, what are the topics you need to understand? Understand about the static variable. What is the use of static block? How many static blocks I can have? 
what is the purpose of static method how to call a static method what is the use of static import and few examples of it that is enough the next topic is interfaces under interfaces you need to learn about the java 8 concepts that are introduced in interfaces that is the new static and default methods that are introduced the functional interfaces lambda expression what is the purpose of method references all these you should learn in case of interfaces remember it is very important to know about the java 8 specificalities of interfaces the next one is exception handling under exception handling of course you might have learned about the five keywords try catch finally throw and throws together with that you should know what are checked exceptions and unchecked exception what is the difference between these two together with that you also should learn about user defined or custom exceptions that is how to create user defined or custom exceptions specific to a project so these are the topics that you need to learn in exception handling once you have completed interfaces and exception handling together with the coding exercises jump to a project this project should include all the concepts that you have learned till now that is the concepts of inheritance abstraction java bean then exception handling the concepts of interfaces all put together maybe you can create it as a simple online book library or an employee management system or a student management system so all the concepts put together when you are implementing it you will understand what is the purpose of each and every topic that you have learned till now the next one is multi-threading in case of multi-threading it is enough that you know the basics that is you should understand what is multi-threading what is a thread that is getting created automatically how to create threads using runnable interface and what is the purpose of synchronization why i am telling that it is enough to learn the basics of multi-threading yes there is one other api concurrency api introduced in java there the threads will be created automatically it is a level above multi-threading so as a developer you don't have to create the threads the threads will be created automatically you will be using the threads for working with your application but in case of multi-threading you will be creating the threads all by yourself but you need to know what is the concept of what is the concept of multi-threading and how it is working so for that purpose you should learn multi-threading also next comes the java apis there are many packages available in java what are the main packages that you need to concentrate which is being used very often java.lang java.io java.util and java.time under java.lang package you should understand about the wrapper classes integer float double character boolean these are classes wrapped around the primitive data types you should understand what is the purpose of it and how to work with wrapper classes and what is the use of object class what are the methods in object class there are few methods like hash code and equals to string clone how to clone or duplicate your object using clonable interface so these things you need to understand in case of object class together with that you also should know the difference between string string buffer and string builder which is from java.lang package the next one is java.io package under which you should understand the concept of serialization what is serialization why we should do serialization and how to serialize our object using the serializable interface so these are the things that you have to know the next one is java.util package under java.util package you should understand about collection framework there is a huge hype created around collection frameworks saying that it is very difficult it is not at all if you can understand the concept and if you are doing a lot of practice it is very easy to work with the collection framework under collection framework you should understand about list set and queue interface under list we have array list and linked list classes under set we have hash set tree set linked hash set and under queue we have priority queue and linked list you should understand what is the purpose of this class how to add elements how to remove the elements how to iterate through the elements in this list all these you have to you should know and what is the difference between these classes in terms of adding and removing the elements say for example if i say tree set tree set is a sorted set say if i want to have a collection in which my elements are sorted automatically i should use tree set so you should understand what is the purpose of that particular class and in which scenario should i use what so this is very important the next one is map interface map interface is used very widely when you are working in projects so it is mandatory that you should know how to use and work with map interface 
Under map interface, we have three classes, hash map, tree map and linked hash map. Here also you should know the difference between these three, what is the purpose of them and when to use which class. So this is very important. Next comes streams API. Streams API was introduced in Java 8. So you should know what is the purpose of streams API, what are intermediate operations, terminal operations, what are the primitive streams that are available in streams API and what is the purpose of optional class that is introduced in Java 8. The next one is java.type. The name itself implies it is used for getting the date time from for the application. In this case, there are few inbuilt classes available. Local date to get the date, local date time to get the date and time, local time to get the time. And if I want to get the difference between two date, then I can go for period class two time, then I can use duration class. So you should have a basic understanding about java.time API. So these are the topics that are available in core Java part. Together with this, you also should know about JDBC, Java Database Connectivity API. This is an API which is used to connect your Java application to the database. In case of database, either you can use MySQL or Oracle database. So these are the topics that you have to be comfortable if you have to be an expertise in Java. Remember, remember you should not just go with the definitions of any concept. After understanding the definition, try to do hands-on practice just by doing very simple programs. Then move on to the next level. By combining multiple topics together, you can create many projects. As I told you, you should have done at least some 50 to 100 programs in all these topics together. Then only you will have the confidence in working in Java. That's it. Thank you.